you are listening to ksg podcast this is a short crisp concise exam oriented edited editorial for civil services aspirants in this podcast we are going to talk about carbon dioxide removal that is cdr strategy source for the content is margaret lenin's article for the print it is becoming clearer with every passing day and with every new high level report that we need to take immediate and increasingly drastic action to blunt our current climate crisis cutting our reliance on fossil fuels is no longer enough we need to find ways to safely remove and store carbon a strategy known as carbon dioxide removal or cdr to achieve net negative emissions but it is imperative that we do not make a bad situation worse every year humans pump more than 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere heat from this greenhouse gas is disrupting planetary systems and reshaping life on earth The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that is the IPCC has warned of catastrophic and irreversible climate impacts with warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial global average temperatures and we are currently at 1.2 degrees Celsius. It also calculated the amount of time left to us under current emissions trajectories before we reach that limit about 10 years. To be clear there is no one strategy that will buy us the time we need to truly decarbonize the global economy and start drawing down carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere but we would be smart to look to the ocean in our time of need we live on an ocean planet after all and it is the greatest reservoir of water the largest habitat and is sink for nearly one third of anthropogenic carbon emissions and more than 90% of the resulting heat the ocean contains 50 times more carbon than the atmosphere and 20 times more than all the carbon stored in land plants and soils if we are going to manage atmospheric carbon dioxide levels to our advantage we will need to leverage the ocean's existing ability to govern the global carbon cycle now talking about the proposed carbon dioxide removal strategies several land and ocean based carbon dioxide removal strategies have in fact already been proposed that may be able to achieve the annual billion ton scale needed to make a dent in existing emissions Common challenges and R&D agendas for ocean CDR have been detailed in a recent report by the US National Academies of Science and Engineering and Medicine. Moving forward with any of these approaches at scale hinges on answering two critical questions. Number 1, will we be able to durably remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? That is, keep it out of the atmosphere at time scales that will make a difference in our efforts to forestall climate disruption. Number 2 will there be ecological consequences that we can accept or that we should avoid at all costs finally the consequences of ocean cdr need to be weighed against changes in the ocean already upon us including and as a result of rising temperatures increasing acidity disrupted food webs arctic melting alterations in ocean nutrient cycles and many more These are not questions we can put off answering as they speak to whether society will be able to achieve our overarching goals while at the same time not doing greater and perhaps even irreparable harm to the planet in the process answering these questions while evaluating the effectiveness of the various carbon dioxide removal strategies will require field experiments specifically designed to explore outcomes that cannot be tested with laboratory or model experiments field studies are needed in particular to address uncertainties about potential ecological consequences the efficiency and permanence of enhanced carbon sequestration and whether the strategy being tested is a practical approach to provide quantifiable climatic benefits. benefits but as scientists and members of society we have a responsibility to move forward with care at the same time that we treat this issue with the urgency it deserves as a result a group of us of which this team is just a part who are principally focused on iron fertilization have drafted a code of conduct to cover our work in the arena and we are proposing it as a foundation to help guide research into any ocean or land based cdr strategy these guidelines come at the same time others have made clear the pressing need for an ethical framework and they have their origin in a meeting at asilomar in 2010 this brought together an international and wide ranging group of experts from academia government agencies non governmental organizations and the business community who considered principles for responsible conduct of climate engineering research now the key points are 
Number one, prioritize collective benefit. The collective benefit to humankind and the environment must be primary purpose of research conducted to develop and evaluate the potential for climate intervention technologies to moderate or reverse human-induced climate change. Number two, establish responsibility. Governments and public agencies must clarify responsibilities for and when necessary, create new mechanisms to govern and oversee large-scale climate intervention research activities that have the potential or intend to significantly modify the environment or affect society. Number three, connect to open and cooperative research. Research should be conducted openly and cooperatively, preferably within a framework that has broad international support. Research activities with the potential to affect the environment in significant ways should be subject to risk assessment, considering the risks and their distribution associated with both the activity itself and the ongoing limits to understand if the experiment is not conducted. Number four, perform evaluation and assessment. Iterative, independent technical assessments of research progress on climate intervention approaches will be required to meet societal goals. Assessing any intended and unintended consequences, impacts and risks will be critical to providing policymakers and the public with the information needed to evaluate the potential for climate interventions to be implemented as a complement to greenhouse gas reductions, mitigation and adaptation strategies. Number five, engage the public. Public participation and consultation in research planning and assessments and in the development of decision-making mechanisms and processes must be enabled to ensure consideration of the international and um, intergenerational implications of climate intervention strategies and activities. Now, finally, guidelines should be adopted urgently. We propose these or similar guiding principles be adopted as early as possible during development and assessment of all forms of ocean or land-based CDR strategies. We also urge others to join in adopting these uh, principles into a common carbon dioxide removal code so that the scientific community will move forward responsibly. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSG in the courses and to crack the ICE exam, visit ksjinia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksjinia.com. Thanks for listening.